Uh, hi everybody and welcome back. If we've not met before, I'm Jay and um, I thought I'd come at you with a very quick video today about one month on on a ketogenic diet and what I've learned and what to expect. So I know before I started the diet, I did lots and lots of research, just trying to understand what to expect, what's normal, what's not normal. Uh, and to be honest with you, having done all that research, it actually served to reassure me a lot when I was going through some very weird things. So I thought today I'd come with just some tips and you know some suggestions and, and just some things to look out for that I experienced. So it's going to be a mixture of the good, the bad and the weird. Um, and again, if you've done a ketogenic diet, let me know if you've had similar experiences or symptoms. I know already some of the girls um, I've spoken to or we've been chatting on this page have said they've had nightmares and things as well. Um, but we'll touch on those in a second. So if you've just joined um, or if you, this is your first video, I have been following a ketogenic diet and I am going into my fifth week tomorrow. So I'm one month down, um, over 10 pounds, just over 10 pounds lost and um, I'm enjoying it. So I made a couple of notes on my phone, uh, so forgive me if I keep looking down. But the first thing I, I mentioned here is before you start, have a big clear out. Um, what I did was um, prior to starting the ketogenic diet, what I wanted to do was just be a bit healthier anyway. So I bought tons of fruit and things like that, which I just knew if they were in the house, I was going to be tempted. Um, so I got rid of a lot of stuff and I didn't chuck it. Um, I actually just went and gave some of it um, to some homeless people. So the fruit and things like that, things that I knew they could use. Um, I'm not much of a consumer of sugary things. So luckily I didn't have that much to toss away. I still in my cupboard do have um, rice and things because I often have my brother here and I have people popping in and out. Um, but have a big clear out, especially of the things that you know are going to tempt you. So if you know you're a big person, um, you know, a person who really likes chips and things like that, I recommend not even having them in the house to just keep yourself away from temptation. As well as the clear out, I'd say get prepared. So stock up. I mean, I stocked up on things like coconut oil. I got lots of olive oil. Um, I'm also using ghee. So I just got the three different types because I wasn't sure which I would like more. So I'm not saying be wasteful, but stock up on the things that you think you're going to need. I did a big food shop, stocked up my freezer, got my cheese, got my eggs, uh, got all of my stuff ready. Um, because I think a lot of the time, you know, when you're hungry and you're really, really hungry, you might just reach out have something which you're not really meant to have on um, the diet and then mess everything up. So stock up so that you always have something um, available that's going to fit into your lifestyle. Within stocking up, another thing I'd say is um, meal prep. So it's something that I do. Um, if I cook, at times I will cook in bulk, um, but also I will make, uh, and I might do a video on the egg muffins, or, or I will make food in bulk. So things that I know I can quickly just pop in and carry to work, uh, because a big saving factor for me has actually been carrying my own food in, into work in terms of lunch. Uh, and it means you're not gonna put yourself in a situation, uh, which I've had before, where you'll order something like chicken, and it'll come smothered in a barbecue sauce or something, and, and you know, that will also put you in a very difficult position. So prep, um, clear out, stock up, and then you're ready to go. The next thing I put on here is water. Guys, water's gonna be your friend. Um, what I did is actually, let me grab it. I got myself a couple of these, uh, and to be honest with you, I am drinking about four or five of these a day, if not more. Um, so the first couple of days, I think you'll probably have to force yourself a little bit to drink more than you normally do. But after that, water is going to be your friend. I've had instances where I felt hungry and it's actually just been thirst. Uh, and now I recognize that. Like if I don't have enough water, I will actually feel parched. So I'll wake up or I'll be at my desk and actually my throat will feel dry and I'll be like, oh my gosh, I am so thirsty. So you're going to have to drink more than you normally do. Um, I'm drinking between 45 liters a day. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll put a link anyway to um, the Reddit Keto website, which I've probably referenced before, but it's helped me so much. And it will kind of give you some guidelines around water and things like that. Um, but I'm drinking water and with the water consumption, be prepared to pee. I, it, it's so annoying guys. Um, the more I drink, obviously, the more I go to the bathroom and literally I've just told myself it's a form of exercise. So I'm, you know, completely it runs through you, but you'll find that you just can't get enough water in your system. 
Within that, another thing to be mindful of is your electrolyte balance. So in the first couple of weeks, there's a couple of weird things that happen. Um, for me, one thing I really needed to be aware of was my electrolytes. So a couple of videos back, I said I started really getting headaches. And that's because my electrolytes were all over the place. Um, I was drinking a lot and my electrolyte balance was not quite right. Um, so there are things that they recommend you do, like slightly increase your salt intake. And you can also get like an oral rehydration mix or, or whatever just to get you back on track. Um, to be honest with you, I increased my salt intake and things kind of leveled out after a day or two. But the headaches can also be down to things like food, um, crate, um, withdrawal, sorry. So if you're a big sugar consumer, sugar and carb withdrawal can also lead to, to headaches. So if you get headaches and you're on this keto thing, just know that it is kind of normal. Um, of course, I'm not a doctor. If it's pers persistent and, you know, something you never had before and you're really feeling unwell, um, then, you know, think about seeing a doctor. And actually, I'd recommend that you do get your bloods and everything checked. See a doctor before you actually start. So that's just my two sets. Um, the next thing I've put on here is constipation, TMI, sorry, I know it's a bit of an overshare, but I know that there are people on these diets who do end up having problems with being blocked up. Again, one of the biggest things to do is just remember to drink water and also have vegetables. So on the diet, you are allowed, um, you know, vegetables. You're allowed green leafy vegetables and so on. So again, think about upping your fiber intake, um, drinking more water, and that soon levels out quickly. A random one here that I've got is chap lips. I didn't know. Guys, I was just... I didn't know why or I didn't understand it, but apparently it's a very common um, thing to get when you're on these ketogenic diets, it's just your chap lips. My lips have been chapping, it's made wearing lipstick a nightmare sometimes, um, but I have been getting these chapped lips. And I think also that could be an indicator that you're just dehydrated. So if you're getting that, again, think about your water intake. Um, sleep which is pleasant for me. I always have trouble sleeping, but I sleep like the dead. Since I started this, sleeping is just easy. I hit the sack and I'm gone. I don't know why, but it's a wonderful side effect that I've had and I feel great for it. I'm sleeping, I'm sleeping like I've never slept before. Um, and I do manage to just, you know, jump into bed and sleep when I wake up feeling so rested. So it's definitely had an impact on my sleep pattern. I don't know about, you know, you guys, if you've had the same kind of results or if you're finding that sleep you're sleeping better but let me know i'd be very curious within sleep um be prepared for some weird dreams now when i say weird dreams i don't mean anything naughty um i just mean um a few people i've spoken to and even my sister had this you start dreaming about food and i think it's food that you're not allowed so you might dream i had a dream last week that i ate sushi and, you know, if you watched the previous video, I was freaking out and I woke up because, honestly, I could almost taste the rice. Um, but, yes, be prepared to dream about food. Uh, I know one of my subbies said she had a dream that she ate a banana and she woke up and she was like, oh, my gosh, I ate a banana. So be prepared to have very random dreams about food. Um, another thing I have put on here, and I've just lost my notes thing, ah, skin. So my skin, I've never had big, big problems with my skin, but I found I'm breaking out less. Um, so my skin is, you know, improved, and I think that's just to do with the water uh, and eating clean as well. Fluctuations, so that's one of the ones I've mentioned in many, many videos. Be prepared, guys, for the scale to just up and down and up and down and up and down. The key thing here is to remember to be consistent. And once you're consistent, it will follow. It has to follow. It's a science, so stick to it. Don't be put off too much by the scale. So I've learned this in the past month. I'm that person. I want to get on the scale. I want to see the numbers going. And then I'm like, yes, I'm, you know, I'm doing it and I'm losing weight. Um, but really, honestly, if this is you, think about maybe you know, wearing some clothes that were previously too tight, go buy clothes. And I think that's what I'm going to do a bit more of now. So I'm going to go buy my clothes. If my clothes are feeling looser, things are slipping on easier, then it's still a result. Don't beat yourself up about what the scale is saying. And uh, with, uh, within that, I've said eating out. So if you are a social person, I travel a lot with my job, lots of hotels and so on. I have learned to be super careful. So apart from just salads with no dressing, things like if you are going to order a steak, find out what they're basting it in. Because I've had situations where I order something and it comes covered in a sugary sauce. Or, you know, we went out for tapas and I had to ask for all sauces on the side. Um, in terms of soups, I've had to ask if they add flour. So it makes you a bit of a 
pest to kind of to go out with um, if you're not prepared. But now what I do is I'll have a look at the menu and figure out what I'm going to eat beforehand. And if all else fails, I'll just have a big green salad and, you know, chicken or, or something fairly simple. So be aware of hidden sugars because they're lurking and be aware of hidden carbs because they're there as well. So in soups and broths and sauces and stuff like that. Um, cravings is another one that I've listed here. I've been okay. Um, like I said, I'm not much of a sugar person, but some people I've heard have had these huge sugar cravings. Um, lately, because I'm a month in, I've been craving fruit randomly. I've just wanted melon or, you know, an apple. And I think it's more about the crunch and the texture as well as the fruit itself. Uh, so be prepared. And when they come, um, I find, and I've read on a lot of blogs, there's people who use lots of wonderful substitutes for, you know, um, they'll drink cola, but they'll drink the diet version. Again, there's nothing wrong with it if it works for you, but I just find it makes you want the real thing. Um, or, you know, bread substitutes or whatever. Uh, I think, personally, it can lead you into more temptation and lead to more cravings. So I just avoid all of those kind of things, and it's been okay for me so far. Uh, but, yeah, you will sometimes get cravings for things like sugar or carbs. And then my last point on here is public perception. So, you know, this is a bit of a controversial diet, I guess. Some people will completely, it's like Atkins, any of these low carb ketogenic diets. Um, some people will completely get it and be like, yay, go for you. Um, go you. Some people will be like, oh, that's unhealthy. This is terrible, blah, blah, blah. Well, I think anything that is going to help you lose weight and feel better and be better within yourself um, is a good thing. So, you know, I would always say to people, do your research, figure out if it's for you. Um, and in terms of public perception, you may not want to say, oh, I'm on this diet. I'm not allowed fruit. I'm not allowed, you know, carrots. Um, I'm, you know, not allowed carbs at all. Carbs are evil. I would probably just say, you know, what I've been doing when I'm out and about is people say, oh, have some of this. And I'll just say, oh, no, I'm just cutting back. And, and people are more willing and accepting if you just say, oh, no, I'm cutting back on sugar, so I'll skip dessert. I'm fine. You know, it's, it's also how you um, present the situation. Uh, so often I find when you say this is not allowed, people will be like, oh, but whole wheat bread is good for you or whatever. So uh, you'll often find um, people will also try to sabotage you. I don't think they do it on purpose, but you will have people saying, oh, just have one or, oh, it's only a beer or, oh, it's just, it's your birthday. Have a slice of cake. So be aware of that, and, and I think it's, it's, you know, for you to manage that environment, and it's how you, as I said, put the situation across, which is going to help also lessen or control how people react to you. Um, but generally, those are things I've learned. Uh, one other thing I forgot to say was funky breath. Be prepared when you hit ketosis. Um, but again, for me, um, what you get is this... Um, Someone on one of the sites was saying that their husband kissed them and he said she tasted like pennies, um, which you do. You get this metallic kind of taste. To be honest with you, for me, that's gone. That's died down as well. So no funky breath. I'm drinking plenty uh, and I'm in a good space. So this is what I've learned, the weird and the wonderful, um, you know, with keto one month in. Uh, let me know how you guys are getting along. Let me know if you've had any of these. Let me know if you've had anything different. I'd be really interested to hear what people are saying. Like I said, if you've not um, heard much about the diet or you're interested in low-carb, high-fat or Atkins or paleo, um, what I'll do is I'm going to put a link um, below in terms of a link on the ketogenic diet and um, just any other bits and bobs that I think might be useful to you um, as you start your journey and uh, you know like comment subscribe you know let me know what you guys think and let me know what you guys have found but if you're thinking about um, you know joining us on this keto journey I'll say do it uh, you know see your doctor see what he's saying um, but join us guys the water is warm uh, and it's it, for me I'm loving it it's been easy enough for me to do and I, I hope this video helps someone out there so that's it for me see you guys next video